Hello, this is Richard Walker from Lucidate. Welcome to this tutorial on using APIs and audio to build prompts and completions to fine tune transformers. In this tutorial, we'll be using a news API with Python to extract news articles to create a data set that can be used to train and fine tune models like GPT-3. Then we'll discuss how you can use audio streams to build data pipelines for fine tuning. If you like these videos and want more content like this, then let me and YouTube know by hitting the like button. If you want to be notified whenever Lucidate releases a video on AI, capital markets or DeFi, then hit the Lucidate logo to subscribe. So let's quickly discuss what a prompt and completion dataset is and why it's useful. In natural language processing, Prompt and completion datasets are used to train and fine-tune models to generate human-like text. The prompt is the initial piece of text given to the model, and the completion is the text generated by the model. The idea is to train the model on a large dataset of prompts and their corresponding completions, so that the model can generate high-quality, coherent text that is similar to human writing or speech. Now, let's see how we can use the News API to create such a dataset. The News API is a web service that allows users to retrieve news articles. Its easy to use Python API can be used to search and retrieve articles from over 50,000 sources, including most news outlets, even blogs. With the News API, you can easily access and process news data and use it to power your own applications, research or analysis. In our case, fine tuning a transformer. First, we need to sign up for a news API account, which is free for non-commercial use. Please be respectful here. These APIs are intended for personal use and research purposes. Always ensure that your code respects the API's license agreement. This will not only protect you legally, but also help maintain the availability and quality of the API for others to use. While the law will vary from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, so always obtain legal advice if you're unsure of your specific situation, the principles here are universal. If you're a company using other firms' content and intellectual property, you need to pay for that IP. Or if you're an individual seeking to charge for content derived from other firms' IP, you need the appropriate commercial arrangements in place. Free for personal and non-commercial use means just that. Once we have our API key and are bound by the license terms, we can use it to make requests to the news API and retrieve the latest news articles. So here's some Python code. This code sends a request to a news API and then extracts the titles and body text for a specified category of articles. It then stores this information in a data frame and exports it to an Excel file. Now let's take a step by step walkthrough to wrap our heads around what's going on. Firstly, we import some external libraries that are full of useful code. The requests library lets us send HTTP requests to web servers dotted all over the world and receive their content. The beautiful soup library allows us to slice up that content and the pandas library lets us create and manipulate tables of data in rows and columns. We then set the parameters for the news API. This includes our API key, as well as the country and news type. Here we have the tech news from the US. If we wanted the business news from the UK, then we would change these fields. We make a call to the requests library on the news API web server and get back a response. This response from the news API will contain a list of matching articles, including the title of the article and the URL of the article on its own web server. Remember that the news API knows the content of over 50,000 news outlets. Each of these news outlets will have their own web server where the contents of the articles are stored. So a good way to think about the news API is like a library catalog. 
the News API maintains an index of all the news web servers in the same way that a library catalogue maintains an index of books. We'll format the response from the News API web server as a JSON string so that we can query it and access the individual articles later. We'll set up two empty lists, one for our prompts and one for our completions that we'll fill out later. We'll then loop through all of the articles in our response. We can slice out each article title and append it to our list of prompts. We can pull out the URL of each article and make a different request to another web server using our requests library that we imported earlier. From this, we'll get back the HTML of this article, and then we can use Beautiful Soup to extract the article body text, which we'll store in the completions list. Once we've finished looping through all the articles we got back from the News API, we can build our data frame, drop any empty rows, and finally save our prompts and completions to a spreadsheet. And the spreadsheet of US tech news looks like this. This is a really scalable way to build our prompts and completions. We've chosen only 50 articles here, but we could just as easily have chosen 500 or 5,000. We have the headline as our prompt and our article text as our completion. We can build a further set of higher resolution prompts and completions from the article text by chunking it up into sentences and using every nth sentence as a prompt and the intervening sentences as completions. Lucidate has found that n somewhere between 5 and 10 works pretty well here. Your results may vary, but this is not a bad place to start. The internet is full of text and other media, including video and audio. Being able to tap into video and audio gives us a whole other vista of language content to fine tune our models. And as the idioms that we use in speech can be different to those that we use when we write, we can give our model more speech-like than literary-like capabilities, should we wish. We can build a very effective data pipeline with just a few lines of code. We can scale this up to easily generate tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of prompts and completions in our chosen subject matter area. We'll start by grabbing audio or video content. In this case, we'll choose a YouTube video. Here's Ian. Hi, I'm Ian, and I work for the Federal Reserve, the central bank of the United States. The Federal Reserve System consists of three main entities that perform key functions that serve the public and promote the health of our economy and the stability of our financial system. These key we'll need to rip out the audio track from this video and feed it into some speech-to-text utility. As well as developing ChatGPT, OpenAI also develops Whisper. Whisper uses state-of-the-art deep learning techniques to transcribe spoken words into text with high accuracy. Whisper's designed to work with a wide range of audio inputs, including noisy or low quality audio and can transcribe speech in multiple languages. It's also designed to be scalable so it can handle large volumes of audio data and process it quickly. If you look at the Whisper documentation, you can see the now familiar transformer architecture. You can also see that the model comes in five levels of sophistication. Unless your audio track is very noisy, the base level is fine for most English language tracks. The large model deals with multiple languages with varying degrees of success. In order to be able to download and manipulate audio and video from the web, we have lots of choices. One great choice is YouTube DL. This lets us access and manipulate YouTube videos. Here's an example of how we can use this Python module to access a YouTube video, strip out the audio, and save the audio file to our local hard drive. These parameters implement some YouTube magic to pull out the audio track. We then give this audio track its correct extension and save the audio file to our local drive. The function returns the name of our renamed audio file. Now we can run Whisper 
on this audio file that we saved to extract the text. This simple script loads the Whisper module. We'll then grab the YouTube video, strip out the audio track, and save that track to our PC as we just described. We then make a call to load the base model and finally use the model that we loaded to transcribe the text. We can see in the console that the text has been transcribed from this video. If we want to build scalable pipelines to gather information from video and audio, then we should consider building some classes to help us. We'll reuse the Lucidate Text Splitter class that we built in the previous video. If you recall, this takes in a string of text and breaks it up into prompts and completions. You can see here the constructor receives a text string and an integer n. This number n tells the class how often to create a prompt from the sentences in the string. We have a function in this class that will split the string into sentences and then build a list of prompts from every nth sentence, with the intervening sentences being the associated completions. We can then build a Lucidate Transcriber class. The constructor here takes in the name of a Whisper model, let's say base or large, and loads an instance of that specific Whisper model. We then have a function to do the YouTube magic, to pull the audio stream from the named YouTube video and save that audio file to our local machine and return the name of that saved audio file. Finally, we have a function to perform the transcription. It will first call our function to do our YouTube magic. It will then use Whisper to transcribe the file with the model we've loaded. The text from this transcription is fed into our Lucidate splitter class to generate our prompts and completions. And then we save our prompts and completions as an Excel file and return our list of sentences from our transcribed text. With these couple of classes we've built, and with help from the Pandas, Whisper, and YouTube DL modules, we can write a simple three-line Python script to transcribe a YouTube video and generate a prompt and completion spreadsheet to fine-tune our model. So here we create a Lucidate transcriber object. We provide the URL of the YouTube video. This video is for the Federal Reserve Open Markets Committee February press conference. Good afternoon and welcome. My colleagues and I understand the hardship that high inflation is causing, and we are strongly committed to bringing inflation back down to our 2% goal. Over the past year, we've taken... Four so with just a few lines of Python, you can tap into hundreds or thousands of pieces of video content, each of them rich with fine detail on a specific subject. You can very easily create a prompts and completions file that you can use to train your own bespoke GPT-3 model that has learned the linguistic idioms of a specific domain. When you're training the model, you're potentially teaching it new vocabulary and updating the model's attention heads to make it more attuned and useful in a specialized area. When we run this script on the fed video, we get the transcribed text and a set of prompts and completions from the transcript that we can use to train our model to learn more about the language and policy of the fed. With over 500 hours of YouTube content being uploaded every minute, some of it by Lucidate, there's no shortage of content to use if you wish to make your NLP model specialised or current in any discipline. We've seen how we can make it specialised in the vernacular of central bank policymaking. As per the previous video, it's very important that you make sure you have the right to use this content. And as laws can vary from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, it's important that you get the right legal advice, especially if you're looking to build a commercial product. 
This is Richard Walker from Lucidate. Thanks for watching. In this video, we've used the news API with Python to create a prompt and completion data set that can be used to train and fine tune models. We've shown how to use the requests library to send a request to the news API and then extract the titles and body text for a specified category of articles, storing this information in a data frame and exporting it to an Excel file for fine tuning. We've also explored how to transcribe speech to text using OpenAI's Whisper. We use this in conjunction with YouTube DL to access and manipulate YouTube videos, strip out the audio and then send the audio to Whisper for transcribing. We saw how we could automate the workflow using Python classes and modules to allow us to build specialized language models in any field of our choice. With all of the text, audio and video available, there is no shortage of data for you to be able to train specialized AI of your own.